Welcome, travelers, to a fascinating trip through the beautiful and old country of Greece. Going to Greece doesn't need to be explained. Greece and the Greeks are always interesting. No matter the season or month, it's full of ancient buildings, beautiful beaches, and architectural wonders. It has a mountainous mainland and thousands of islands. It is also the home of democracy and the place where Western civilization began. Hit that like and subscribe button if love to travel. Now, let's get started. First one on the list is Kefalonia. You can fly or take a boat to get to Kefalonia. If beaches are more your thing, you can go to the well-known Myrtos Beach. It's a huge 1.5-mile stretch of white sand that has been chosen many times as Greece's best beach. The town of Assos is one of my favorite places here. It's a small, beautiful town with colorful houses built on a peninsula that looks out over the water. There's a small cove that makes for a beautiful scene. It's a charming Greek town. The Melisani Cave is another place that people like to visit. You can take a boat out on this beautiful underground lake with water that is as clear as glass. The story says that Melisani drowned in the cave after the god Pan turned her down. Even though the story is a little sad, the lake is beautiful and the water is clear as glass. It's a place where you can both relax and go on adventures. At ninth stop we leave Kefalonia. We will go to the city of Athens, known as the birthplace of democracy and the cradle of Western culture. It's Greece's capital and biggest city. It's also one of the oldest cities in the world, with a past that goes back more than 3,000 years. There are many places to see, like the Temple of Zeus or the ruins of the ancient Agora, which was once thought to be the heart of ancient Athens. But the main thing to see is the Acropolis, one of my favorite places in Athens. But get ready to walk a lot. From here, you can see all of Athens, which looks like an endless sea of white buildings with mountains in the distance. In the past, it was called the Upper Town and was used for prayer. There are old churches, altars, and even theaters to be seen here. This place is home to some of the most well-known structures in Western society. The Parthenon is a good example. There are a lot of cultural activities, especially open-air movies that use some of the amphitheaters that have been there for a thousand years. The Monastiraki Street Market is just a few blocks away from Plaka. It is a great place to find unique things to buy. Must see its ancient ruins and landmarks, such as the ancient Agora and the Theater of Dionysus, to name a few. But Athens is not just full of old wrecks. This busy city is also an important cultural and nightlife hub. It's our eighth stop for those who want to have a mythical adventure. It's where the old Greek gods lived, Mount Olympus. This could be one of Greece's most exciting places. It's the highest mountain in the country at 9,570 feet. It takes about two to three days to hike, and you should have a guide because it can be risky and hard to figure out what to do. The area around is just as beautiful. There is a town called Litokoro at the base of the mountain and right next to a beautiful gorge with tall cliff walls. Advanced hikers will be happy to reach its highest peak, and even tourists who like to take it easy will enjoy the many paths along the lower slopes. Every year, thousands of tourists come to see the deep gorges, rocky pinnacles, wildflowers, wildlife. It's easy to see why the Greek gods picked this place to live. As our seventh stop, Sakynthos calls us with its blue seas and famous shipwreck beach. It's the most well-known place on the island. In the 1980s, the Greek Navy crashed a cargo ship from Turkey into this cove. The sand has grown up around the ship over the years, making it one of the most beautiful places in the world. The only way to get to the beach is by boat. With its beautiful turquoise water and white beach, Navogio Beach on the coast is one of the most popular places to visit. You should also go to beaches like Lagana Zante, Jaraka's Beach, and Vasilikos Beach, besides Navegio Beach. After you've explored the island's green bays, take a break from the beach to visit the town, the island's capital. It was built by the Venetians, who also gave the island its name, Fior de Levante, which means Flower of the East. Our sixth stop, Meteora, will blow your mind. The Greek word Meteora means suspended in the air which is a good way to describe the amazing cliffs that rise more than 1,200 feet above the towns of Kalambaka 
and Kastraki in northern Greece. It's about four hours by car from Athens. It's home to monasteries that were built on rock pillars that were almost impossible to reach in the 14th century. More than 20 monasteries were built between the 14th and 16th centuries by monks. There are six monasteries that are still standing. The monastery of Great Meteoran is the biggest. Whenever you go to Greece, you have to go to this beautiful place. The view from these monastic getaways is nothing short of heavenly, and the peace and quiet of the area is truly humbling. After that, with more than 6,000 islands, it's safe to say that Greece has some of the most beautiful islands in the world. Corfu, our fifth pick, is also known as the Emerald Isle. Located in the Ionian Sea, just off the northwest coast of Greece, right on the border between Greece and Albania. It's known for its rich cultural history, rocky mountains and beautiful beaches, which makes it a very popular place to visit. Since there are so many beaches to choose from, it's easy to find your own perfect spot. Porto Timoni is one of my favorite places on Corfu. It's a beautiful bay in the shape of a circle, with beaches on both sides. It's a short walk down there, and the views are well worth it. Cape Drastis is another interesting place on the island. This cliff area has sea rocks with really interesting shapes that are worth seeing, especially at sunset. Aside from the white sand beaches, the island has quaint towns and villages like Perithia and Corfu Old Town, where you can see remnants of Venetian architecture and old castles that were built to keep pirates out. Number four on our list is Crete. It's the biggest island in Greece and the fifth biggest in the Mediterranean. It is where the oldest culture in Europe started, the Minoan civilization were Europe's first advanced people, who lived on Crete from 2700 BC to 1100 BC. This is pretty interesting. The most important historical site on the island is the Nassos Palace, built about 3000 years ago and has about 1400 rooms. Chania is one of my favorite places, it's very interesting, in the 13th century, it was ruled by the Phoenicians, who built the walls that are still there today. I really like how the lighthouse looks out over the bay. It was built in the 1600s and Egyptians made changes to it in the 1800s. It's now a busy island with lots of things to do. Alafamisi Beach is one of the most famous places to go to. It's a beach with a unique shape and water that's as clear as glass. Now Bala's Beach, it takes about an hour to get there from Chania on this dirt road, and it's a good hike down from the parking lot. Now both the beach and the lake are crazy. I mean, there's just this remote spot with this beautiful scenery. Don't forget to explore Samaria National Park for a great walk. If you really like Greek myths, don't leave Crete until you've seen the Cave of Zeus on Mount Ida, the highest point on the island. Our third stop, the island of Rhodes is another Greek place from the Middle Ages. It's the fourth largest island in Greece. Located in the East Aegean Sea, close to Turkey. Rhodes is an island with a long and interesting past. The old town is one of my favorite places there, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. During the 14th century, the Knights of Hospitaller took over Rhodes and turned an old Byzantine castle into the palace of the Grand Master. It is an impressive medieval building and one of the few examples of Gothic design in all of Greece. It's almost like a museum in the open air. You should go to the Butterfly Valley, the Cretinia Castle, and the Monolithos Castle. The Great New Market is another great place. It is right in front of the Mandraki port. The town of Lindos is one of my favorite places on the island. Its best feature is the Acropolis, which looks down on the city. Around 900 BC, the first temple was built here. Over the ages, the Romans and Byzantines added to the Acropolis. It is now one of Greece's most well-known and well-preserved archaeological places. Next on our list is the party island of Mykonos. I'd say that it's the second most well-known island in Greece, known for its lively nightlife and a place to dance the night away. But don't be fooled, it's not all about the parties. This island also has beautiful beaches and quaint towns where you can get away from the noise of the clubs. Even though the streets are full of small shops, stores, bars, and restaurants, the town still has its own character. Because of strict building rules, the style and spirit of its traditional Cycladic architecture have stayed the same. 
In the summer, there are lots of people here. When compared to other islands, this one has the most different kinds of people. There are also a number of museums and churches with Byzantine art in their halls. Must try Mediterranean food, fresh fish, and the way people eat called mez. It's also known as the Island of Wind, and there are some really cool windmills to see. It's just so much fun. You can fly or take a boat to get to Mykonos. We're going to the famous island of Santorini for our last stop, a beautiful island in the Aegean Sea. Santorini is part of the Cyclades and is known for its dramatic views, beautiful sunsets, whitewashed houses and the active volcano. I went there a few summers ago and it lives up to the hype. Ia is one of the most well-known places. When you think of Greece, this is the place that comes to mind. There are white houses with blue roofs and a crazy background. In the morning, the sunrise is the most amazing thing. From the port, there are three ways to get to the island's capital, Fera. The first choice is to take the cable car, which will drop you off right in the city. The second is by donkey, yes you heard it right, and the third is by foot, up the 588 steps. The city isn't very big, so you can get to know it and enjoy its beautiful views in just one day. It's great for lovers because of how cozy it is. It has an amazing vantage point for great photos. The architecture is a mix of Venetian and Cycladic styles. You can also go to other small towns and nature parks on the island. In the middle of the island, there is an active volcano. This volcano is now a national park. Now, Red Beach is a really cool beach. It's known for having red sand and red rocks that look like they belong on Mars. On the southern side, Lichada was another beach I really liked, with narrow black sand beach and rocks that look like nothing else in the world. As the sun sets and turns the sky orange and pink, you'll understand why Santorini is often called the island of love. No matter what brings you to Greece, an interest in Greek mythology, a love of the country's amazing nature, or a desire to try Mediterranean food, will find it all and more when you visit this amazing country. I made a new website for more intriguing tales and travel guides, I'll put a link to it at the bottom of this description. I hope that our suggestions will help make your trip to Greece a good one that you will remember. If you liked this video, click like, and then subscribe.